Yeah, as we branch out of the spectacles and into the art house, maybe maybe we can use the Fablemans as our in between. Even though Absolutely. the Fablemans is not is not a blockbuster action movie spectacle movie, it is a recognized Hollywood director in Steven Spielberg. And um, what did you think of this film? So I really like the Fablemans. Uh, it's interesting. I was mentioning before how characters in Hollywood who previously would have been dismissed by critics or, you know, more art house kind of leaning audiences are now kind of being embraced because their films are not doing as well because there seems to be a lot of concern about the, the state of sort of adult-minded cinema uh, mm. in, in Hollywood and, and in the film industry. You know, in the 90s, Spielberg was someone who's kind of poo-pooed as this overly commercial guy who kind of killed New Hollywood, right? And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now he's being embraced as like, you know, one of the last keepers of, of this tradition of, of cinema. And mm. I got to say, I mean, I guess maybe I'm being influenced by that narrative a bit, but I also think The Fablemans is just a good movie. I, you know, it's, um, there's enough of the personal in it that I, I found it compelling. I mean, it is the story of, of how he kind of became a filmmaker. I'm sure it's embellished in many ways, but there's also a quality to his filmmaking that I just find very refreshing. I mean, the way he presents family dynamics the way he kind of presents, I don't know, a coming of age story in a way that's appreciative of maybe some of the things we've lost, you know, in the last 30, 40 years as, as we've kind of made this transition to, to digital and, and as social media has taken hold and as a lot of the kind of more analog, tactile aspects of experience have, have fallen by the wayside. The Fablemans is a reminder that, you know, this other world did used to exist a world where you kind of ran around with your friends outside and got your hands dirty and and did mm -hmm. things like make eight millimeter films and yeah. for me there was something really beautiful about all of that and i i really think too the the central performances were really good i mean i i thought uh, michelle williams did a really great job uh i was impressed by paul dan i was impressed by all the people in the film. And man, I got to tell you by by the last scene, and this might be a, a spoiler for some people, though I, I'm sure everyone almost has heard about it if you're following film news. I know what you're going to say. David Lynch. Go ahead. <laughs> he makes an yes. appearance at the end of the film. <laughs> and it's just so great. And, you know, the story about that uh, was, was interesting in its own right, because they were hounding, you know, Lynch to, to get involved uh, you know, Spielberg really wanted him to to play. He plays John Ford, basically, the director. And he got Spielberg enlisted the help of Laura Dern to kind of help yeah, him. Yeah, she do had to this. call him a bunch of times to convince him. Yep. And when he finally agreed to do it, he said, I'll do it on the condition that I have a bag of Cheetos every day. Yes. That you give me a bag yes. of Cheetos, which is such a yes. David Lynch thing to ask for. Yeah, I mean, even Seth Rogen is is really good in this. And there's a sort of California experience, yeah. I guess, mm -hmm. or how would we put it, like Southwestern American experience that I, I find really interesting. It, it, I guess it's kind of a reminder of, you know, the sort of artistic creativity that was in the air mm. in the 50s and 60s. And it's, it's a reminder, I guess, of... Uh, uh, that sort of vitality, that social vitality, that creative vit vitality that existed that um, we may have lost or, or may be at risk these days. Um, I don't know. What did you think of the film? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on, on everything, really. Uh, I've heard people saying that this has got all of the har hallmarks of a Spielberg film. I, I don't really see it that way. I, I This is, mm. you know, a... a, a older Spielberg um, who is trying to you know who is who is telling the story of a younger Spielberg and and you see the the kind of passion for you know the excitement of filmmaking that he showed in a movie like Duel which is basically just a a film about his 
incredible knowledge of lenses and how to use lenses, you know, and to, <laughs> to see the, the, the train wreck, you know, stuff I just thought was fantastic. Um, yes. To me, I sort of took it not as a typical Spielberg movie, but what we'd imagine a Spielberg memoir would be. Mm. So there's, and I mean that in good and bad ways. I mean, it's, you know, it's got this kind of, uh, like you, you were kind of saying a California summer glow to it. Mm. Um, but at the same time, there's some of the problems of Spielberg, which is there's nothing unsurprising, really nothing threatening. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the positive side, a real love of cinema and an expression of that love with some just gorgeous and memorable shots and scenes, you know, little moments like, you know, him as a boy holding his hands up and looking at the uh, projection in his hands and, you know, coming up with the idea for the gunshots by, po you know, cause he saw his mom, you know, his mom's sheet music, which had a hole in it, you know, from when she threw the, <laughs> the sheet music off the <laughs> piano, you know, to her, to Michelle Williams dancing in the, um, in the car headlights. Um, yes. I just, I, I really liked it, but it was, you know, at the same time, it was a safe Spielberg movie. It was a, it was a little slow, but, mm -hmm. you know, I enjoyed it because I love cinema too. And it's a good story about that and about a character who um, finds that love and, and holds on to it. Um, I, I feel like Michelle Williams carried the film. Um, mm -hmm. And I say that... Uh, as someone who does not always ap appreciate her maybe as much as she should be appreciated. I, I find her a bit cold at times as an actress, mm -hmm. but here she's great. It, there's, you know, there's moments where she's overacting, but she also owns the character. She seems entirely lost in the character. There's some incredible close-up shots of her, um, you know, feeling things exactly as you would imagine somebody would feel in that situation. She's got a complicated situation that she's going through. Um, and I, I thought she carried the film and, and I thought it was good. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I, I, I couldn't help but wonder though, listening to what you said, you know, we, we kind of mentioned that cinema is, is, is kind of about risk taking and revelation mm. and and stuff like that, and I I wonder are we being you know a little complacent here in terms of appreciating this sort of film which which isn't taking many risks which may be more mm. of uh, kind of preaching to the choir in terms of what we want and and maybe a nostalgia fix for for a type of movie that we grew up with maybe it's too much comfort food for us and and we're kind of giving it a free pass because even though it's not really taking risks. Um, yeah, that's that's a fair point. I would say to that, the, the counterpoint might be that I think there is a, a lot of character revelation in terms of Michelle Williams and Paul Dano. And I, I would say too, the uh, the Gabriel LaBelle guy, the Sammy Fableman or the young Spielberg. We are presented with this, you know, kind of the dissolution of the idea of the, the 50s nuclear family. And... Mm. That in in terms of this these characters is a revelation, and perhaps too mm -hmm. for Spielberg and and the image of Spielberg, it is kind of revelatory in a way, knowing that this guy who's become famous for for being this family friendly filmmaker really kind of came of age discovering that his his mom was was being unfaithful, mm -hmm. you know that he drew off of divorce as as one of yeah. the key inspirations for making these these family films and the dramas that he's famous for. So I don't think it's entirely true that this movie doesn't have risk or, or is is not revelatory, though I will say it's it's cer certainly much safer than a lot of the other films on the list. And um, yeah, yeah, you just made me think of something, though. Oh, yeah. Which doesn't have anything related to what you were just saying. But I just when you said um, his relationship with his mother, I. <laughs> Two of the great popular filmmakers who knew each other very well and collaborated together, Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. It's you know it's been said that George Lucas, his filmmaking is has a lot to do with his difficult relationship with his father, and maybe Spielberg, a lot of his filmmaking has a has to do with his difficult 
but very close, it seems, relationship with his mother. Just a thought.